Chapter 23 Jonas felt more and more certain that the destination lay ahead of him, very near now in the night that was approaching. None of his senses confirmed it. He saw nothing ahead except the endless ribbon of road unfolding in twisting narrow curves. He heard no sound ahead. Yet he felt it, felt that elsewhere was not far away. But he had little hope left that he would be able to reach it. His hope diminished further when the sharp, cold air began to blur and thicken with swirling white. Gabriel, wrapped in his inadequate blanket, was hunched, shivering, and silent in his little seat. Jonas stopped the bike warily, lifting the child down, and realized with, realizing with heartbreak how cold and weak Gabe had become. Standing in the freezing mound that was thickening around his numb feet, Jonas opened his own tunic, held Gabriel to his bare chest, and tied the torn and dirty blanket around them. Gabriel moved feebly against him and whimpered briefly into the silence that surrounded them. Dimly from a nearly forgotten per perception as blurred as the substance itself, Jonas recalled what, what the whiteness was. It's called snow, Gabe, Jonas whispered. Snowflakes. They fall down from the sky, and they're very beautiful. There was no response from the child who had once been so curious and alert. Jonas looked down through the dusk at the little head against his chest. Gabriel's curly hair was matted and filthy, and there were tear stains outlined in dirt on his pale cheeks. His eyes were closed. As Jonas watched, a snowflake drifted down and was caught briefly for a moment, moment's sparkle, in the tiny fluttering eyelashes. Wearily, he remounted the bicycle. A steep hill loomed ahead. In the best of conditions, the hill would have been a difficult, demanding ride. But now the rapidly deepening snow obscured the narrow road and made the ride impossible. His front wheel moved forward imperceptibly as he pushed on the pedals with his numb, exhausted legs. But the bicycle stopped. It would not move. He got off and let it drop sideways in the snow. For a moment, he thought how easy it would be to drop beside it himself, to let himself and Gabriel slide into the softness of the snow, the darkness of night, the warm comfort of sleep. But he had come this far. He must try to go on. The memories had fallen behind him now, escaping from his protection to return to the people of his community. Were there any left at all? Could he hold on to a, a last bit of warmth? Did he still have the strength to give? Could Gabriel still receive? He pressed his hands into Gabriel's back and tried to remember sunshine. For a moment, it seemed that nothing came to him that his power, power was completely gone. Then it flickered suddenly, and he felt tiny tongues of heat begin to creep across and into his frozen feet and legs. He felt his face begin to glow, and the tense, cold skin of his arms and hands relax. For a fleeting second, he felt that he wanted to keep it for himself, to let himself bathe in the sunlight, unburdened by anything or anyone else. But the moment passed and was followed by an urge, a need, a passionate yearning to share the warmth with the one person left for him to love. Aching from the effort, he forced the memory of warmth into the thin, shivering body in his arms. Gabriel stirred. For a moment, they both were bathed in the warmth and renewed strength as they stood hugging each other in the blinding snow. Jonas began to walk up the hill. The memory was agonizingly brief. He had trudged no more than a few yards through the night when it was gone and there was cold again. But his mind was alert now, warming himself ever so briefly had shaken away the lethargy and resignation and restored his will to survive. He began the walk faster on feet that he could no longer feel, but the hill was treacherously steep. He was impeded by the snow and his own lack of strength. He didn't make it very far before he stumbled and fell forward. On his knees, unable to rise, 
Jonas tried a second time. His consciousness grasped at a wisp of another warm memory and tried desperately to hold it there, to enlarge it and pass it to Gabriel. His spirits of strength lifted with a momentary warmth, and he stood. Again Gabriel stirred against him as he began to climb. But the memory faded, leaving him colder than before. If only he had time to receive more warmth from the giver before he escaped. Maybe there would be more left for him now. But there was no purpose in if-onlys. His entire concentration now had to be on moving his feet, warming Gabriel and himself, and going forward. He climbed, stopped, and warmed them both briefly again with a tiny scrap of memory that seemed certainly to be all he had left. The top of the hill seemed so far away, and he did not know what lay beyond. But there was nothing left to do but to continue. He trudged upward. As he approached the summit of the hill at last, something began to happen. He was not warmer. If anything, he felt more numb and more cold. He was not less exhausted. On the contrary, his steps were leaden, and he could barely move his freezing, tired legs. But he began, suddenly, to feel happy. He began to recall happy times. He remembered his parents and his sister. He remembered his friends, Asher and Fiona. He remembered the giver. Memories of joy flooded through him suddenly. He reached the place where the hill crested and he could feel the ground under his snow-covered feet become level. It would not be uphill anymore. We're almost there, Gabriel, he whispered, feeling quite certain without knowing why. I remember this place, Gabe. And it was true, but it was not a grasping of a thin and burdensome recollection. This was different. This was something that he could keep. It was a memory of his own. He hugged Gabriel and rubbed him briskly, warming him to keep him alive. The wind was bitterly cold. The snow swirled, blurring his vision. But somewhere ahead, through the blinding storm, he knew there was warmth and light. Using his final strength and a special knowledge that was deep inside of him, Jonas found the sled that was waiting for them at the top of the hill. Numbly, his hands fumbled for the rope. He settled himself on the sled and hugged Gabe close. The hill was steep, but the snow was powdery and soft, and he knew that the time there would be and he knew that this time there would be no ice, no fall, no pain. Inside his freezing body, his heart surged with hope. They started down. Jonas felt himself losing consciousness, and with his whole being willed himself to stay upright atop the sled, clutching Gabriel, keeping him safe. The runners sliced through the snow, and the wind whipped at his face as they sped in a straight line through an incision that seemed to lead to the final destination, the place that he had always felt was waiting, the elsewhere that held their future and their past. He forced his eyes open as they, were, they went downward, downward, sliding, and all at once he could see lights, and he recognized them now. He knew they were shining through the windows of rooms, that they were the red, blue, and yellow lights that twinkled from trees in places where families created and kept memories, where they celebrated love. Downward, downward, faster and faster. Suddenly, he was aware with certainty and joy that below, ahead, they were waiting for him, and that they were waiting, too, for the baby. For the first time, he heard something that he knew to be music. He heard people singing. Behind him, across vast distances of space and time, from the place he had left, he thought he heard music, too. But perhaps it was only an echo. The end. Uh -huh.